and all the love in the world. It's uh, 16 minutes past 10. Jonathan Count with you on a Tuesday morning. Now, if the weather was nice at the weekend, you might have taken advantage and got out and about on the dales or the moors for a walk. And having completed six or seven miles, you may well have um, sat back afterwards and uh, enjoyed the scenery, feeling rather content and proud of yourself. You might even have uh, had a, a hot foot soak when you got home or a refreshing drink. How pleased with yourself would you feel, though, if you had just walked over a thousand miles? Over a thousand miles? It's a ridiculous question. Who would do such a thing? Well, actually, the man sitting opposite me this morning, Mike Brockhurst, has just finished an 80-day walk that saw him walk from Ferraid Head, a dramatic peninsula, and one of the most northerly points in the west of Scotland, to Lizard Point, the most southerly place in the British mainland. Good morning and welcome to the studio. Good morning, Jonathan. Um, so when did you finish? I finished last Tuesday, a oh. week ago today. Uh, if, you, if This time last week I was actually at uh, a place called Mullion uh, where I met my wife and a few friends who were going to walk the final stage from me and I walked along the west, uh, the southwest coast path from Mullion to Lizard Point on a beautiful blue sky day where the, ski, uh, the sea was uh, really blue as you It was a fantastic day and a great ending. Somewhat unlike the weather in North Yorkshire today. Well, somewhat, yes, but, but the weather in North Yorkshire is typical of England and that's what makes it so beautiful because the weather, if, if it doesn't rain, you don't have a green and pleasant land. No. And, and Britain's a great and <laughs> green and pleasant land, isn't How are it? your feet? Uh, recovering, but still quite painful. I mean, uh, walking for 80 days non-stop it was a really, really difficult uh, challenge. Um, I have walked long distance paths before, and I've always had to uh, use blister plasters and, and take uh, precautionary steps and everything else. But this time, 80 days on the trot, impact on the feet. With a 16 kilo backpack on as well, you've got to consider that you're carrying another couple of stone on your back yeah. all the time. How far do you walk in a day? Um, I average 50 mile a day. Some days were nine ten miles where i wanted to visit somewhere in particular bath for example i'd never been to the city of bath so i made that short day so i could explore the city but some days were 25 miles um those 25 mile days were very long days start at eight o'clock in the morning finish at eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night sometimes later when i was really struggling particularly in scotland where some of the uh, tracks weren't tracks at all and i had to negotiate my own way through land do you do you walk solely on tracks or do you are there actually sections of this where you have to walk on public roads well my uh, the, some of it is public road. I try to avoid public road as much as possible by picking the route I did. Traditionally, people, uh, there is a challenge called uh, Land's End to John O'Groats, lots of people do, uh, but a lot of it is road. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to pick my own route that would take in, and, and uh, John O'Groats uh, is on the northeast of Scotland, so you would have missed the great, spectacular Northwest Islands. Uh, beautiful mountains in Ross and, Ross and Cromarty and Sutherland. I wanted to do that. So I t avoided roads as much as possible, but it's impossible to avoid them completely. What sort of planning do you have to do? Because, I mean, this, this kind of project fascinates me. In this pack, is there a tent? Is that where you're going to yes, sleep? Yes, or yeah. are you walking from pub to B&B &B to pub to B&B &B type thing? Uh, in North West Scotland, I had no choice. No. <laughs> there are no pubs and B&Bs in certain places I was walking to, so I had to use the tent. In the 80 days, I used the tent 12 times. Uh, most of the time was in Scotland, sometimes in England, because I was uh, with a colleague called uh, Strolling Steve, my buddy, and uh, we uh, actually chose to camp sometimes by rivers, by streams, and really enjoy the evenings, some beautiful evenings, so that's when you camp. We were due to camp in Hebden Bridge, but we had the most horrendous thunderstorm, and it would have even, uh, the tents would have been washed away and everything else, so the, so the plan to, to camp was quickly aborted, and we found uh, accommodation at Hebden Bridge. But yes, I carry a tent, I carry a sleeping bag, I carry uh, a mattress, and a, a blow-up air mattress, uh, of course all my provisions. In Scotland I had to carry supplies for three or four days as well, because I couldn't find shops, there were no shops uh, on, on stages. Um, and sometimes it felt very heavy, particularly it was raining as well and you've got all your wet gear on and, and the rain's pouring down is this the last great adventure that you can have in a very built-up island a very sort of we're very technologically con connected even the places that you know we think of as being remote you know someone can arrive in a helicopter and you can make a mobile phone call a lot of the times if you get into trouble but th this must be the last great uk adventure uh, i think people can make adventures of, of their own jonathan i really do i mean york for example York, uh, people don't identify uh, York with walking, but you've got three great trails around this around this city. You've got the Orvik Trail, you've got the Eber Trail, and you've got the Minster Way. How many people walk them and, and make, a, make a plan of walking it all and doing it logistically? That can be an adventure in itself. Um, but if you 
the, the walk that I did, yes, it, it's 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 probably the the ultimate in adventures and walks you can do around the country. Having said that, there is one that I, I think is a lot harder, and that's uh, some people embark on a full tour of the coast, walking around the coast of Great Britain. How far is that? Oh, I, uh, three or four thousand miles. It's, it's going to be. It's going to be. And what the what the uh, National Trails and uh, Rights of Way Association is doing, they're trying to make uh, all of it accessible. Obviously, there's, there's some farms and some places and some military places where they do uh, uh, testing that you they have to walk off the course a little bit and walk back onto it. But that is the ultimate challenge. But the one I did, for me, <laughs> was hard work. <laughs> it was really, really hard work. Where the whereabouts does your love of walking originate? Because people will gather that you are deeply into it. You actually run yeah. a website that's, that's all about walking. Yeah, I've got, I've got a website called Walking Englishman. And what, what that is, I every walk I do... I write about the story. I write the story of the walk in my eyes, how I enjoyed it, the, the, the sights I see, the experiences I have. I have lots of walking friends in Harrogate uh, who I walk with. There's there's Jez and Dave and CJ and other guys. There's a team of us that we go out and we really enjoy the days. We really do enjoy the days. Um, but so the love of walking, where does it come from? I was born in North Allerton, so I'm a North Yorkshire man. Uh, my I used to explore the fields and villages uh, around Brompton and uh, where I was born in North Allerton. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, my grandfather used to take me for a walk with his with his dog when he was five or six year old across the fields, and I just loved exploring. In those days, the fields had little ponds in them and little copses that have now been levelled because of intensive farming. But still, it's a great place to learn. Do we do it? Do we do enough to promote? York and North Yorkshire and the whole of Yorkshire as a walking destination? I don't think we do. I don't think we do. I think there are places such as the Yorkshire Dales and some uh, some villages thrive on it. Look at Kettlewell, for example. It's it's a, it's a walking mecca. Um, and, and you look at... Uh, go back, go further away, go into the Lake District now and Keswick has become just focused on walking and the walking fraternity shops that are springing up everywhere um, I don't think we do, we've got great trails, we maintained those trails as well, I mean some trails I walked on one of the trails I walked on uh, was the Staffordshire Way um, I'm, I'm sorry Staffordshire, you should be disappointed with that trail because it was badly maintained, there was barbed wire over fences uh, some, some of the farmers had put electric wiring over fences as well, so I've got evidence of it and I've, I've wrote to Staffordshire Council and so have some friends of mine, but the rest of them were very well maintained, if we can do the same in Yorkshire encourage it, assign it better people will go out, walking's great for, for the soul, it's great for your health it's great for the environment as well because you're not clogging up, You've, I heard earlier there was talk about trains, eight percent uh, is it increase in train fares yeah. walk walk <laughs> walk into town uh, and everything else i walk into harrogate all the time i live about a mile outside of harrogate i don't ever uh, i use the public transport either you're supposed to go in home but i'll usually walk down and walk back because it's it's healthier uh, one of the added benefits i'm not going to i'm not going to write a, <clears throat> a book on uh, on dieting but i lost two and a half stone on this walk well i was going to say how many calories do you consume doing what you've done well lots put, every day put it this way i've lost two and a half stone i would never have lost that any other way um I, no way um, whatsoever. So, yes, you must consume lots of calories. You've I mean, also got yourself an extremely healthy tan. I mean, it's, you look like you've just come back from the Mediterranean, but that's genuinely 80 days that's genuinely under 80 the UK days. sunshine. <coughs> that's 80 days of UK rain, UK <laughs> storms, UK winds. So it's not a suntan, it's a weathering. It's a weathering. <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe it, it's a weathering. But, no, I mean, some beautiful sunshine. And you've always got the sun's rays coming through in through the cloud. But was, it's a fantastic place. What was the best bit of this walk? Was the one moment where you... <coughs> sort of your breath was taken away and you thought I didn't think I was going to see that I, I, that, that's, that's special oh there was one um, I've never seen it before strolling Steve my, my friend from uh, down Bristol where he really he used to spend his childhood there he says you will be blown away by this and it was Cheddar Gorge I've never been through Cheddar Gorge it was it was spectacular so that was, that was one but there was many many I mean the experiences uh, so Cheddar Gorge was fantastic I always love walking through the Yorkshire Dales. The entry into the Lake District from the north over back of Skiddo was fantastic. The Northwest Islands, the remoteness, some days I walked by myself, I never saw another human being, was, was fantastic. The Southwest was fantastic. I can't really single anything out. It was all fantastic. But also was fa what was fantastic was, uh, <coughs> sorry about that, was the meetings with people. 
Mike Rockhurst from Harrogate is my guest this morning. Uh, a week ago today, he was completing a walk of 1,100 miles. This, do you got this sort of glow inside, a feeling of great achievement? Uh, absolutely. Um, this will live with me for the rest of my life, uh, simply because I planned it myself. I, I made the itinerary such that it, it, it was demanding. I had to complete the itinerary in 80 days. Um, Yes, it, it was a fantastic experience, the whole experience from start to finish. Um, and I, met, uh, I mentioned just before we went uh, for a break that uh, people were part of it. And uh, <clears throat> one of the great things about walking is the characters you meet. Um, for example, on the Cape Roth Trail, I didn't meet very many people at all. There was nobody on it, <laughs> just me and the, and the sheep and a few reindeer and, and whatever. Uh, but when I got to Fort William, um, I had a little bit of a break in Fort William because I actually had, a, had to have a day off because I had impact damage on my heel and I had to take a day's break and catch that up afterwards. Um, but on the second day uh, of resuming walking, I walked from a place called, from, called Kinloch Le Leven to uh, the Pass of Glencoe. And I was, I was just walking. It was a kind of miserable day and I'd, I was walking up a, a, a steep mountain uh, to start the walk. Ahead of me, I saw this chap and uh, he was walking along quite casually and he didn't have a backpack or anything all he had was a handkerchief in his hand and uh, we walked for about half a mile I, we kept pace and eventually um, I caught him up and we started chatting chatting and this chap's name was Ron Aubrey Ron Aubrey was 70 years old and one day the day before on his 70th birthday he climbed up Ben Nevis and uh, we got chatting away um, and I walked with him for the next 15 miles and it was an absolute pleasure to walk with the man. So enthused just about walking, so happy about the environment he was in and everything else and that was, that was a beautiful experience. Uh, the next day I met a couple on a bridge. They were actually uh, riding bicycles and the, the chap's name was Tom Mills and his wife's name was Gail. Um, got chatting to them, they're good friends now. I've met five or six people I've never met before who walked with me for full stages of the walk and they're all good friends now. There's a special bond then, isn't there? <coughs> a special sort of brotherhood or sisterhood it, of it, unity the, well, of walking that, together. That's what happens in walking. You do get those kind you do you do get those friendships. They are they are really close friendships. There'll be people, Mark, who are listening, thinking, well, how did he do it? Because I've got a job to go to every day. Yeah. How do you find the time? How do you make 80 days in your life in order to, to, to go on a venture like this? Well, I work in a great industry for a great company. Um, I work in the water industry. I'm uh, Innovation General Manager at a company called Alpha Beta Utility Solutions. Uh, I actually resigned. And uh, uh, my, my boss uh, rang me up and says... Uh, what are you resigning for? I don't, I don't want you to resign. Um, and we had a chat about it. I said, look, Colin, I need to go and do this walk. It, it's in my head. Uh, it's in my soul. You know I like walking. I also do long-distance walks. But this is a really special one. It says, how long do you need? It was as, as simple as that. It says, how long do you need? I said, I need a, a month to prepare, <coughs> three months to do it, a month to get back and recover and write up uh, parts of it and everything else. He says, fine. You come back and we'll talk about it when, we, when you come back. So I, I'm blessed by working for a good company and having a good understanding boss. Um, so that's how I can do it. I know everybody can't. But the people who can't do it, to do it holidays and breaks, you can go walking long weekends. I do, I do generally do walking long weekends or walk, walk or on a Saturday or a Sunday, single walks. You don't have to do it 80 days on the trot. A lot of people break them up into stages as well. Uh, but I was very, very lucky. Very, very lucky, and I, I have to thank my company for that. Three cheers for a, a, an understanding em employer. Yes. And they must want you back. I understand you're an expert in mending leaking pipelines. But well, yeah, uh, my, my job is uh, innovation general manager, and what I do in that role, I'm trying just to, to create and stimulate interest in innovation in the industry. Um, we all get, the, the water industry, all us get high profile criticism when pipes burst. Like leaking pipes, everything else. The first thing that happened, oh, there's a burst pipe on uh, uh, Bootham Crescent in, in York or wherever. Block the roads, the company will come out, block the roads, go in, everything else. If we can do that from the inside, you won't see us doing it. We're going to have to stop. Let's just give a, one very quick mention to the two organisations who benefited from the walk that you've done. Yes, um, the two organisations are Building Better Futures, which is Balfour Beatty's own... Uh, 
sponsored charity um, and what they do they provide uh, support to homeless people and give them opportunities in life and the other one is Harrogate Skills for Living and Learning Disabilities Centre in Harrogate that as I've gone along the walk people have just passed me money and everything else and I've got a nice cheque to present them from that as well which is quite substantial Congratulations on a great achievement thank you very much indeed for coming in and telling your inspiring story this morning uh, Thank you Jonathan if I just say one thing everybody go out walking it's a great thing to do and go and have a look at Mike's website website it's www.walkingenglishman.com and uh, if you haven't been inspired by his words you'll be inspired by his website